UNC versus Gonzaga for the championship on Monday. Uh, I did not see the South Carolina versus Gonzaga game live. I was actually intermittently watching on recording uh, until I just had to give full focus to UNC versus Oregon because I wanted to see that in real time. And I'm going to go back and watch Gonzaga versus South Carolina, but it's 9 o'clock West Coast time already. I want to get a clip up. I'm shooting this around 9 o'clock West Coast time. I want to get a clip up by you know 10 o'clock on the YouTube channel opposed to midnight, 1 a.m., uh, because I'll also be going uh, out because I'm 25 years old, and that's what I'll be uh, doing. So uh, UNC missing four free throws and grabbing two offensive rebounds to win the game with you know eight, seven seconds left it perfectly encapsulates how North Carolina has won almost all of their games in this tournament run. It is easily the strangest tournament run I've seen from a dominant team in the NCAA. At no point besides the opening round against the 16 seed, has North Carolina looked like a team that could win the tournament? Yet, they are now in pole position to win the tournament. I'm not trying to sell Gonzaga short. Um, I think it's remarkable that they've made it finally. They've broke through to make the Final Four. That was uber important for the conference that they play in and the story of how they've been knocking on the door for what feels like six, seven, eight years. Now, in North Carolina's uh, uh, case... Roy Williams has been there before. They were in the championship game last year. They carry a storied legacy. I think it would have been a more interesting story if it was Oregon versus South Carolina. But the good thing about North Carolina being in the national championship game is that I feel that there's no possible way that there's a blowout. It could be. I'm not making any prediction right this second. But I don't see a blowout happen because North Carolina has the weirdest ability to stick around in games, whether they're down a few or up a few, and then in addition to having being around, they can't really put games to bed in this tournament run, so it creates a lot of suspense. Um, <laughs> how, how do you not grab one rebound, man? In addition to that, how do you miss four straight free throws, man? Uh, the, the, the second that North Carolina was put on the line with those, with those clutch time shots, the four, the, to start it. So Kennedy Me Meeks missed his two. I just immediately get the flashbacks of, of Derrick Rose in Memphis. Like, just don't miss these. These are the ones you need to make more so than any of the ones that have gotten up to this point. Uh, and let alone just think about the two, if they made the first two, and I know that's a lot easier said than done. And got the rebound fouled again. You just need one games put to bed, but you know, I guess they did it the hardest way possible. Uh, to grab those two rebounds. Uh, uh, Oregon, going up for the rebound on the first, uh, second Kennedy Meeks missed free throw. So the first set of free throws that were missed, the second one rattles off the rim. Two hands, man. Two hands and your body. Two hands and get your body to box him out. I know that was not an easy reach, but one hand slipped right by it. And uh, North Carolina gets the ball back. Roy Williams is pumped, and they get fouled again with four seconds. Back to the line. <laughs> misses two more. Uh, I'm not going to harp on Oregon for that. Uh, I, I think Tyler Dorsey is an incredible talent. I think that Bell uh, has been a, a great boost for the tournament. And the, the continuing narrative that I saw over and over again is how Oregon, how is Oregon going to be able to beat this team without their star point guard? How is Oregon be able to be able, going to be able to beat Kansas without their star point guard? And eventually, it wasn't because of their star point guard being out. I actually thought a lot of the problems with Oregon in the end towards the end of that game was that you're 2 of 14 from 3 very late into the second half. Uh, and you were forcing up some some long 30-foot-esque three-pointers, 28-foot three-pointers. And I found that frustrating because it's a different story when the three ball is falling a little bit more, at least a higher uh, efficiency. What was frustrating about watching that is that down low, when they were attacking the rim, the refs were calling almost everything on both sides. So there's a good chance you're going to get to the line if you just attack the rim. And then also, when they were, you know, hovering around the three-point line, Dorsey and Brooks uh, and Bell, and they were trying to make things work, they would eventually find the sleeper uh, underneath for an easy layup. They would not go away in addition to North Carolina or just refuse to pull away. Uh, I actually thought there was 68-61. to 61. And all I thought North Carolina needed to do at that point was just get two more points, make it 70 uh, or three, make it 71, 61, make it a 10 point lead. You should be able to, you know, hold them off and play possession basketball. And the pace was just through the roof for both teams at times where I thought you should be pulling back, pulling back, 
play the shot clock, play 25 seconds, and take time. Time was your friend for North Carolina, and they ended up coming out with the win, where for Oregon, time was their enemy, and, and fortunately for them, North Carolina kept pushing the pace, which, in the end, makes it more fun to watch anyway. And it's like the complete opposite of the original four-corner North Carolina offense where they would hold the ball for 35 seconds, 34.9 seconds, then get a shot off. Uh, and they do that again, and then they do that again, and then they would do that again and again and again and again and again. But we, as we always do, we want a competitive championship game, those championship moments. And uh, I got to say, though, to be honest, the best game in college basketball this tournament was Mississippi State women's basketball versus UConn. Um, man, that was fun. And I got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, is there a clip for it? No. Was Dak Prescott pumped? Yes. 111 game win streak comes to an end. There was like something like 1,400 straight days that UConn women have been the national championship uh, champion of basketball. So you want to talk about being dethroned? That is a Game of Thrones status buzzer beater. Who's winning the national championship game? How are your brackets? Is UNC Gonzaga somebody something you had? Possibly. Uh, did you have the final four? Very unlikely. Did you have most of the upsets? Even more unlikely. But someone's got UNC winning and someone's got Gonzaga winning, so some people are still alive in their brackets. I am not. Uh, comment below, like, favorite, and subscribe. Some people put up the uh, uh, saying, I want to pick at the, the wall thing behind me, the paint chip. I'm never going to paint that because I know it annoys some people, and that's the kind of person I am. Uh, follow me at JasonRoom91 and all the good stuff. We'll see you next time.